to the channel and today we are going to be drafting the basic pants pattern. Before we start, please make sure you go down to the website. The link is in the description box below. Download the worksheet from the link and fill in your measurements and do the calculations. This will make the drafting go very quickly so that you don't have to do any more math. We'll just concentrate on drafting. Right, the paper you need you need something as long as your waist to floor measurement with some extra. This is about 48 inches. For the width, this is for the front, you need something that is about one quarter of your hips plus about four inches. That's about how wide the paper should be. So try and get the long paper. You can see mine, I stuck two large sheets of brown paper together. We're going to start with the front. Now this is the edge of my paper, the right side of my paper, the left side of my paper. You're going to square a line down the right side of your paper. That will be our guideline. So just square a very long line all the way down. Now we're going to start with our vertical points, starting at the top, come down about two inches or so from the top of your paper. I'm going to mark the point, point A, square across a guideline at point A, from point A to point B. Put in your hip depth. That's point B. Square across the guideline. From point A to point C, put in your crotch depth. Square across another guideline. Next, from point A to point D, down, mark your knee. Square across from there. And finally, from point A to point E, you put your out seam measurement, that is your waist to floor measurement. Square across. Now we have our grid all set up. Next, we're going to start with our hip measurement. You're going to measure your hip plus one inch ease and divide that by four. That will give you a quarter of your hip. You're going to put that measurement from point A to point F. Do the same measurement on line B and line C. Join all the points. Just square down. Going to 
call this point F, G, and H. Next, you're going to put in your crutch, your front crutch extension. If you follow the calculations, you should have that measurement already, minus 2.6. Remember, use your own measurements. So from point H here, measure out your front crutch extension. I'm going to call that point I. Next, you're going to measure from point C to point I. Just measure that line, just your crotch line. Measure it all the way. Point C to point I. Whatever you get, find the halfway. Find the halfway point. Mine is 14 and 3 eighths. So half of that will be 7 and 3 sixteenths. I'm going to mark that, 7 and 3 sixteenths. Mark the same measurement, seven, the halfway point here. Mark the halfway point here. Also mark it on line E. The halfway measurement, this measurement, do the same here. Now we're going to square down this line all the way to the end. I'm going to label the points. This is going to be point J. Then on your crotch line, that will be point K. On your knee line, that will be point L. And on your baseline, that will be point M. So we have all the grids set out. Now we have to do connect the dots. Next, from point F, I'm going to measure out your front waist measurement. So it's going to be your waist, your front waist plus the dart measurement, if you've done your calculations. We're going to put that together. My front waist is 9 and 1 8 plus 7 8. That gives me 10 inches. So I'm going to measure that out. So from point F, measure out your front waist plus the dart measurement. Okay. I'm going to call this point N. Point N. From point N, you're going to just square up for the shaping. Square up about a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch. You can go as much as half an inch. I'm just going to do half an inch. Okay. So that is your front waist. At point J, we're going to insert our dart. My dart is 7 eighths of an inch. Whatever your dart measurement is, split it equally on either side of point J. Those two points, we'll call them point O and point P. And from point J, you're going to measure down the length of the dart. Just find the halfway point between this, between your hip depth, halfway, and that's going to be where your dart ends. So halfway of my hip is here. We'll call that point Q. So join point O to Q and P to Q to form your dot. Okay, 
That is our dart. Let me highlight everything so that it's clear. Next, you're going to join point N to point P, the upper part of point N where we did the half an inch. We're going to join that. Just use a small curve like this. As for the waist, may have like this. Alright, now we're going to shape the crotch. You're going to join points I to point G to point F. What you want to do is just draw a curve. Stop somewhere here. So I'll join this. Make sure this ends on the straight edge and then this just joins up to point F. Just follow your straight line. That's your center front. Now we're going to join that point N side to point B. Just to shape the hip. So we have our waist, our darts, our hip line, our crotch line. Now let's move down to the legs. Now at point L on your knee line, we're going to put in the knee measurement. My knee is 20. Now the knee is not an exact measurement. You just want to take around your knee with some ease. To be honest with trousers, you can actually square down all the way and it's just going to be straight. I want to give it a little shape. So, my knee is 20 divided by 2, that's 10. So I'm going to put 5 inches on this side, 5 inches on this side. So whatever your knee is, divided by 2, I'll just split the measurement. Okay. For the base, moving down to point M, since I had 10 here, I'm going to take away 2 inches and this will be 8. And that will be 4 on this side and 4 on this side. I'm going to call this point R and point S point T and point U. Now you're just going to connect the straight lines. Connect S to U on this side. That's with a straight line. And connect R to T on this side. So T to U is the base of your trouser. So we've shaped that. We just have to connect I to R and C to S. So you should just do this with a straight line first. Can I use a pencil? Then I'm going to curve it in about a quarter of an inch here. It's just a slight curve. We don't want a very deep, deep curve. Okay, there it goes. 
So that just shapes the die from point C to S, the same thing. Just going to join it with a straight line first. It's actually okay, I don't need to do any shaping. You can just connect the two. So this is your front complete. See, it's very straightforward. Once you get the upper part done, the legs are just straight lines. As I said, you can actually just go straight down. You can actually go from point I straight to point T without stopping at the knee. But I prefer to do it this way because some of us have thicker thighs or thicker calves and all that, so it's good to take note of the middle measurement. Other than that, this is your front. Now the back is just like the front, it's simply a modification of the front. So we are actually going to trace the front on another sheet of paper and do the modifications. Or in the alternative, you can use the same pattern as it is now and draw your back on top of your front with a different colored pen then later trace your back into an ash sheet of paper. But to make this clear, I'm just going to copy my front onto an ash sheet of paper for the back. How you copy it is really up to you, but what I like to do, I have my paper folded here, so my back is going to be on this side. I'm simply going to use a tracing wheel all around to trace it and redraw it on another sheet of paper. So, when you trace out your front, what we're really interested in are all the guidelines. So you should have your waistline, hip line, crotch line, knee line, and baseline. You should also have the crotch line up to the extension. We also want that center line running through the trouser. So you don't need to put the curve of your hip, and you don't need to put the curve of your crotch. You don't need to put the curve of your waist. We just want those guidelines. So draw all your guidelines in. Very important, line F, G, H, that should be there. Center line should be there. So make sure all your guidelines are in place. That's what we need for the front. And also, another thing we did for the front is that we flipped it. Our crotch was on this side when we drafted. So when you're tracing, turn your paper upside down so that your crotch ends up on this side. This is not necessary. It's just so that your front is facing one direction and your back is facing the other direction. Right. So I have my pieces traced out. Let's modify it. This is going to be really quick. So I've added some extra paper around the crotch area because it's going to come out a little longer. This is my center front line from when, this is where your front crotch curve used to be. It's on this side now. So the first modification we're going to do is the crotch extension of the front sorry, of the back. You're going to measure H to I, which is your front crotch measurement, and take half of that. So mine is 258. Half will be 1516. So you're going to note what half of that is. From H, you're going to put that half measurement on this side. So let's see. H and put that half measurement. I'm going to call that point one. For the back, I'm going to use numbers. So I'll call that point one. And now from point one, you're going to measure out your back crotch extension. Your back crotch, uh, crotch extension is usually twice the front. So if your front was two, the back will be four, things like that. So mine is five and a quarter. And you measure it from point one. Okay. Here. I'm going to call that point two. So I measured from point one to point two, back crotch line. Next, on from point J to F, J being where your dart used to be, the center dart of your front, to the center front point, J to F. 
I'm going to measure this. This is not exact thing. You just want about one quarter of the measurement. Mine is about four and a half. So one quarter is about one and one eighth. So you get a quarter of that measurement and you measure from point J. Measure from point J. Mark that off. I'm going to call that point three. So you're going to join point one to point three with a straight line. So this is creating our center back measurement. You can see it tilts away from where the front was. Join point one to point three. From point three, you want to extend about an inch. So I'm just going to put the ruler back. Extend this line about an inch above the waist. We'll call that point four. So you have one, two, three, four. All right. Next, we want to put in our back waist. My back waist is eight and five eighths plus the dart, which is seven eighths. So that gives me nine and a half. So you're going to measure that back waist measurement from point four. First, just draw a guideline. What you want to do, take your original waistline and extend it out. Because the back is going to extend out. So let's extend the line out. Then from point four, measure that um, back waist measurement. Mine is nine and a half. So from point four, I'm going to put nine and a half. Don't draw it in yet. Just find out where it is. Mark the point. Now from that point of the waist, you're going to go up half an inch for the shaping so that it matches the front. Half an inch. So now the points you want to join is point four to that half an inch mark that went up. And still make sure is your back waist measurement are just as needed. Okay. So that's my back waist. Okay, you see it's half an inch above the line, remember that. So that's back waist. Stop there first, we'll label that point point five. Next, we're going to find out where the hip of the back is because we've changed this. Now what you're going to do from point four, you're going to measure down your hip depth. Mine is nine inches. Find out where your hip depth is. Measure down from point four. Call that point six. Now on your normal original hip, hip line, B, G, that normal hip line, just extend it out again because it might come out a bit more. Extend it out. Now from point six, measure down a quarter of your hip. This is the same as the front, one quarter of your hip measurement. Same as what you used in front. Mine is 11 and three quarters. So from point six till you touch that hip line. That's my hip line. We'll call this point seven. Okay, let me draw it in so you can see. Alright, point seven. Now you're going to join point five to point seven with a curved line. Also a shallow curve, not too deep. That is the side of the back. Then point four, one to two, that's where we're going to squeeze in our crutch. We're simply going to merge it somewhere around here to point two. So you can just drop your curve like this. And 
merge the curve. So that is your center back line all the way here to point two. Now before I move down, we're going to put in the dot. So the way we'll do the dot, you measure four to five, that's your waist. I'll find the halfway point. Mine is 9.5. So halfway is four and three quarters. Now you put in your dot. My dot is seven eighths. Using that point, we can call that point point eight. Using point eight as the center, just distribute your dot evenly. If your dot is one inch, half inch on one side, half inch on the other side. Mine is seven eighths of an inch, so I'll put three sixteenths, three sixteenths. Okay. I can call those two points 9 and 10, so 8, 9, and 10. For the length of your dart, we want about 3 quarters of your hip depth measurement. It's not an exact measurement, just about 3 quarters. Two points. Right now, I'm not putting in the length of the dart. I'm just putting in a guideline because we usually want the dart to be parallel to the center back line. Alternatively, you can just square make it perpendicular to the waistline. It gives you a slightly different angle, but there about. Now, once you put the guideline, the length of my dart, as I said, we pretty much want about three quarters. Mine is going to be about six and three quarters, or six and a half, there about. And we'll link We'll call this point 11, link point 9, 11, 10, and 11 to form our dot. So that's the dot for the back. We're almost done. Now we'll move down to the legs. Now to end the back, your knee line and your baseline. The main thing in the back is going to be about an inch wider. So all you're going to do is add half an inch on this side, half an inch on this side, half an inch on this side, and half an inch on this side. So just add half an inch on either side of your knee and half an inch on either side of your base. So we can call this points 12, 13, 14, 15, and join these new points together. Finally, you join 7 to 12 and 2 to 13. Now what we're going to do is cut out the back and through the two pieces. What that means, we'll compare the out seam and the in seam because those are the only two places the front and back meet up and see how they are and then we'll make any corrections. Okay, now I've cut my pants. I just want to show you something. When you cut, leave a little space over the crotch curve here. Same 
for the back. Leave, leave some paper over the crotch curve. If you don't have any paper, you can stick some on. So that be careful to cut around your borders, your waist. When you're cutting your waist, remember to fold your dart first, then cut your waist. Your waist, there should be a small curve. Then for the back, you fold your dart and cut your waist. with a small curve here. Right. Now, the two things you want to check, or three things, your trouser, let's start with the most important one, the crotch. If we leave it like this, when you sew, you're going to probably end up with a little bit of fabric. Fabric excess at the crotch, which is not nice to sew. So what you want to do is this. You're going to take the first, um, the first centi uh, five centimeters here, five centimeters to two inches thereabouts. I'm going to match the two places, just up to here from, just put them together, not on top of each other, just next to each other, from the center point there to about five inches, sorry, five cm or two inches, just thereabouts, okay, you put them together, and what you immediately see is this place coming up a little. Now what we want to do is eliminate this point we want a smooth line we don't want it to be pointy okay so what you're going to do is take a ruler hold this down you're going to take a ruler put it under this curve and this curve like this it doesn't matter exactly where but just close to the end you should touch the curve of the back and touch the curve of the front. You have that peak above the ruler and then we're just going to draw a straight line. I need to draw a straight line there. Where is this? Draw a straight line there. Right. So we have drawn the line to correct. So we're just going to recut the pattern following that line straight and drawing the curve. So I can pull it apart. I'm just going to pull it that line. Pull it straight. And finish cutting the curve. As for the front, do the same thing for the back. Just the first two inches. You can see now we have a smooth curve. So we've corrected the crutch. Because when you sew trousers, that is where it meets. So you have to do this. Trust me, it makes sewing it much, much easier. So we've corrected the curve of the crutch. After that, you also have to check your inseam and your outseam. So those are the two places you connect your pattern pieces. These two seams, the inner seams have to match, and the two outer seams have to match. To do that, just put one piece on top of the other. It doesn't matter which one, the front or back. And you can start checking. You can start from the bottom, start from the leg. I just cross check the your side seams. I'm simply just checking the pattern. You can walk the pattern along the one underneath. Okay. Just walk it, walk it, 
walk it and check that it ends and it's okay. Sometimes the back might be about a quarter of an inch longer and that's okay, but mine is the same. You do the same for the inner thing. You press check, make sure your knees are getting to your knees. Check the inner thigh. You see here I have a tiny space, just about a quarter of an inch. That's okay, it's just a little ease on the back. And that's all. So you really just check that. Make sure that those two are not too off. Make sure your knee lines are where they should be. And you can sew them together. So this is your basic pants completed. That's your back. That's your front. It's very straightforward. Once you get the upper portion done, the rest of it is just straight. As I said, some pant patterns you can actually really just go straight to the ankle but i like to give it a bit of shaping and this is just a basic pattern you can modify it make the legs wider make the legs narrower and so on and so forth so you don't have to worry about it fitting perfectly at the moment okay right so thank you for watching and goodbye